what if we could you know save two million bucks and use it to uh, to, to advance other projects all right so you said that uh, DB2 Viper 2 also will be known as DB2 version 9.5 it will is going out the door pretty soon yeah um, you know what are some of the compelling things in this release that uh, that customers should be looking to. Okay. Well, just, actually, just uh, as you asked that question, one thing about 9.5 and 9, it will, they will be separate service streams. So it's not a fixed pack on top of the other. You can stay on version 9 and continue to be supported with fixed packs on version 9 and move to 9.5 and stay and uh, get fixed packs on 9.5 as well. So separate service streams. Um, but 9.5 is, is, a, is a healthy release onto um, itself in terms of the amount of content features about the same size as, as Viper, so a very significant release. Uh, some of the interesting features that, that I like about the release, one is uh, on the warehouse side, we're adding cubing services. So today, if you use uh, build uh, OLAP cubes, generally what happens is you end up having to have a separate uh, storage, separate infrastructure for that uh, OLAP cube. Um, and so then there's two problems. One, and chances are good you're not dealing with the actual data, you're dealing with back level of data. And secondly, you've got a separate infrastructure to set up. What we've got with QB services is do the OLAP within the, the database itself. Utilize the, the database engine itself to process the, uh, the OLAP function. Uh, so that we have in 9.5. And soon after 9.5, roughly in first quarter, we'll have an Excel interface. So you can have an Excel interface into your your cubes that are built within DB2 itself in the same infrastructure. So that's one. I think and I think that'll a lot change. of value for data warehousing uh, customers. Um. That that that's 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 yeah that's one a nice example. Another example is our uh, workload manager. So this is uh, you know we've already been we already have uh, a number of customers who can run mixed workloads, transactional workloads, and a warehouse. We have one client. For example, in their warehouse has two million transactions per day. So a, uh, a data warehouse that looks more like an OLTP system. Uh, so we've had that capability. What Workload Manager is about is taking some, some of the same concepts you find in the mainframe. We're able to set different service level agreements by user or by kind of workload and separate those out. So that if you have a set of of queries you want to keep running and at the same time you've got large uh, large reports running at the same time you can go ahead and control how much resources you give to the to reports and you can favor them at night but but have it uh, have it so that you can segment out your workload be able to achieve your service level agreement so that's this is a, um, a pretty revolutionary change for us and again borrows from a technology that we've already got in other parts of the portfolio um, yeah, there's a number of other changes for warehouse, things like uh, compression, making compression smarter. So automatically decide, uh, hey, I have enough information. Uh, let me go ahead and build a dictionary and compress from then on. We've got uh, uh, improvements in our redistribution. So as you add nodes to the data warehouse, dramatically uh, improve the speed with which you're able to redistribute data and, uh, and add to those nodes. Another, another interesting feature that we added uh, is around our XML support. So we added uh, being able to take XML and put it within the data pages. Now, it, from a technology point of view, it just seems, so, so what? Now, what that means is that uh, it gets compressed. And uh, what it also means is dramatic improvements in performance. So we've had, um, I believe the numbers are something like, you know, 60% better performance on a workload and 40% less space. And this is with a, a client that's, that had been using our uh, DB29 support. So, so in terms of being able to take XML and use it in a transactional uh, environment you know, for that's transactions versus. Incredible. So some great things in, in i5. Okay, sounds good. How about going forward, you know, beyond uh, Wiper 2, the future releases of DB2, what are some of the, uh, uh, the focus areas and the strategy behind the future release planning? So, so um, a lot of what we do, what we'll continue to do is around supporting our customers, our customers' uh, business needs. So uh, we're already starting on our next release called Cobra. 
Um, it has a whole set of items around our core values, which you know things like warehouse, SAP, ISVs, and, and XML uh, support. Uh, a lot about in this industry is is about doing things uh, faster and simpler. So faster from a performance point of view, faster from a mixed workload point of view, um, and that's especially true in, in the warehouse. And then simpler. And so we've already we haven't talked about the balanced configuration unit, but but simplifying. Uh, how we deliver, what, what we deliver, making it, it uh, uh, adding autonomics, making it simpler to administer the warehouse, making DB2 an invisible part of your infrastructure. So we'll continue around those core values. I think, I think you know, the, the, uh, we've been in this business for a long time. I've, I've been in uh, the DB2 team since uh, 1990, 1991. Um, and times change, but a lot of the core values are, are the same around uh, delivering uh, business value around making uh, the database more uh, robust, faster, and, and easier. We call sharp scalability, high availability, reliability, and performance, and you'll see us continue in, in those directions. All right, sounds great. Thank you very much, Sal. Thank you.